Okay, yes, I can admit, I probably did listen to Imagine Dragons for a few years too long for how proud I was of my music taste at the time. I don't think I fully gained self-awareness until I was like 11 or 12. But in fairness to me, I was also still pissing the bed at that age. So, you know, I had a lot on my plate. There was a lot more I had to worry about than just that. However, I did eventually move on. And well, what did I move on to? Post Malone, Juice World, and Logic, because what else would I have listened to in middle school? But I guess it is what it is. This is the music I've been cursed to be forever nostalgic of. Almost a full decade later, and now I'm instantly brought to tears upon hearing The River from Night Visions. It's full-blown Stockholm Syndrome, and nostalgia is my captor. I need help. But whether you've been listening to Pink Floyd and Radiohead since age five, or it's AJR and Limp Bizkit, we all have music that we're forced to look back on. One way or another. And it sure is a weird relationship. Depending on the memories you have connected with those songs, you may cringe when looking back on some more than others. But what exactly made me like this music so much in the first place? And why don't I like it nearly as much anymore? And why is every album I liked as a kid so hated? Okay, so I think the most reasonable place to start is finding out how I got involved with uh, these blokes in the first place. Well, those guys and some more people, but you know, we don't have to name any specific bands, it's fine. So for literally years, the music you hear is out of your control. The music your mom plays for you to go to sleep, the music you hear in the background of your favorite movies and TV shows, the music your parents play in the car, it's all kind of happening around you. Yeah, sure, maybe you begged your mom to play Baby Shark one more time, but for all intents and purposes, your parents had ox. Now, it's very likely, in fact, it's probably provable if I wasn't incredibly lazy, that the music you hear as a little tiny baby influences what you prefer to hear as a functioning human being. So I don't want you to misunderstand this section as me saying these early formative years are important because they probably are. But for our purposes here, we're just going to talk about when you have full control. I know for me personally, that started with Apple Music, more specifically the iPod Touch, which by the way, Whatever happened to the iPod? Actually, no, no, I think the iPad just replaced the iPod. But anyway, as long as I had 99 cents, I could literally buy any song ever written. And so you'd think, with all of this newfound freedom, I would find some truly highbrow shit. I would find the songs that really spoke to me, that I could be proud of as a young adult. But no, that's not even remotely close to what I did. As a kid, I think the most consistent way music ended up on my iPod was just hearing one or two songs from an artist and just, you know, assuming I would like the rest of their discography. In the in the case of Imagine Dragons, I guess I just heard Radioactive and Demons and then decided, without even knowing it, that that would become my favorite band of all time for a long time. Because for me, at age 7 or 8, all you really needed to do was give me some energetic pop rock chorus and I'd be happy as a clam. I'd shut right up like you were putting a little binky in my mouth. Well, a, a binky for an 8 year old. I don't. I don't know. And I can totally understand that for anyone above the age of 14, especially those involved in the broader music scene, are not quite as easy to please. And I think that might be where the disconnect is. Literally, how did your favorite bands end up becoming Imagine Dragons and Coldplay? Were you forced to listen to the man? What the hell happened? Well, no, I was just a young, naive, and easygoing child. But let me get a little bit more specific here. Take the album X and Y by Coldplay. I heard Fix You somewhere as a kid, and so I bought the entire album. It's a decently accessible album for a kid. In fact, I would say it's probably quite enjoyable for someone with an undercooked frontal lobe. And even now, I'll defend it and say that the melodies and the orchestration on this album are pretty jamming. Now, compare that to an album like The Benz by Radiohead. It's often said in the music community that Coldplay is a PG version of Radiohead. And whether or not Chris Martin and the gang intended to do that, they did a pretty good job. Because as a kid, Radiohead was terrifying. And trust me, I tried to listen to them. I know for some of you that probably makes absolutely no sense, but just hear me out. Between their relatively intimidating and threatening sound and Tom York's occasionally haunting vocals, even on their early stuff, I really don't blame my younger self. And that is coming from someone who absolutely loves Radiohead now. But here's the thing, I listened to Coldplay at age eight so that I can enjoy Radiohead at age 19. See what I mean? There's a process here. It, there's a pipeline. It's not just me coping. No, but in all seriousness, this is all to say that I think a big way we initially form a connection with music is preferences we don't even know exist yet. Some random influence made me want to listen to Coldplay initially, and from there, 
it kind of built up my entire music taste. I would stick to Coldplay for years until I finally kind of graduated to Radiohead. And that's not to say that one band is objectively better than the other. It just kind of worked out that way for me as a kid. Remember, I was legitimately scared of Radiohead. I do understand that sometimes as kids, we're scared of things that we definitely shouldn't be. Like in elementary school, I was literally scared of Eminem because the kid who I sat next to in third grade listened to Eminem and he would tell me about the plot of horror movies. So that wasn't good. No, no Eminem. I do think before we move on, it's important to mention one more thing, and that is that environment definitely does change how your music taste initially evolves as a kid. For me, like I said in the intro, in middle school, I pretty much only listened to hip hop. Granted, not the most niche hip hop. It was, you know, kind of pop rap, but it was rap nonetheless. I didn't just magically one day decide I was going to stop listening to Imagine Dragons and start listening to Logic. It was because the friends I had in middle school, they didn't really think Imagine Dragons and Coldplay were that cool. So I, you know, assimilated. That's not to say that I didn't enjoy the music I I was listening to because I definitely did, but it would change how I would look back on it. But we'll get to that later. Point is that music taste can definitely be a product of your environment. All right, so let's regroup for a second. So whether it was through your friends or through preferences you didn't even know you had yet, there's music in your life that has come and eventually gone. Some of that music by now you've probably even forgotten about. But what exactly made you walk away from those OG albums in the first place? Well, let me just cut right to the chase. One thing that's always made me want to drop an album or genre completely is when I start to notice the patterns within that album or that genre. Because every album or genre has some degree of corniness. And when I start to realize the patterns and tropes throughout that album or genre, it kind of makes me want to distance myself from it just a little bit or a lot. Now, I do understand that there are some people, okay, maybe a lot of people who are immune to this, but I know there are a percentage of people who have had a similar experience to me. But let me give you an example so you can try to see what I'm talking about. Like I said in the intro, I've been listening to rap album after rap album pretty much since middle school up until 2020 and was totally content. But I randomly had this come to Jesus moment. Holy shit, I've been listening to nothing but redundant and corny rap songs for the last few years of my life and I'm getting bored. Now, just just a reminder, I wasn't listening to the most highbrow hip hop, so you just gotta understand where I was coming from. And not to mention, I had just been introduced to the genre that I would then become obsessed with in Neo Psychedelia, so it was all just coming crashing down. It's crazy though, I can literally remember the song I was listening to when I got hit with that wave of boredom. I was mowing my lawn and listening to the song Dun Dada by Youngin Ace. Not a horrible song even. It's actually pretty catchy, but I just became self-aware in that moment that I had heard enough songs just similar enough to it where I was starting to get bored. I am aware though that people do find themselves getting bored of genres or albums a little bit more gradually though. And that sometimes it's less of a sudden realization and more of just gradually getting bored like an old toy. Everyone's overplayed a song for themselves. I remember last summer I listened to the song Fancy Clown by MF Doom so many times I was pretty much forced to take a hiatus. In fact, I don't even remember what the song sounds like anymore, and that's probably for the best. It might have been the only song I listened to that summer. But imagine, instead of just getting that numb feeling for one song, you kind of felt like you overplayed an entire genre or album. Here, I'll use myself as an example again. I went through a pretty intense R&B phase a few years ago, and it was short-lived. But why? I've proven to myself now that I tend to hang on to genres for a pretty long time. Well, I think I just slowly got bored. I had overplayed all the songs I had rotation so much that I was just kind of searching for something new. But I should probably specify, I wasn't listening to the most deep and critically acclaimed R&B. It was Joji, Daniel Caesar, and Khalid. So not awful music, just kind of more on the pop side. And that isn't just pop slander, that is actually important to mention here. Most of the music that I've listened to throughout the majority of my life has been pop oriented or at least pop adjacent. Like if I did listen to a song off of a more artsy, critically acclaimed album, it was definitely the lead single that the artist wanted the general public to hear. And I think a lot of these things, like Slowly Getting Bored of music over time or suddenly realizing the patterns and tropes of your music are most common with pop genres. Like if I had been listening to some highbrow jazz since age six and I loved it as much as I did Imagine Dragons, I might still be listening to some of those same artists and albums to this day. There's almost infinite substance and textures and details to pick out of an album like A Love Supreme as opposed to Smoke and Mirrors. So there's another thing I probably need to mention right about now. Because up until this point in the video, I've definitely made it seem like all the music that you used to listen to, you look back on with cringe and disgust. And I'm fully aware that this isn't always the case. Nostalgia is a cruel mistress because while we do associate the music we used to love with cringe and weird memories, we might listen back 
with a smile. This album probably brought a lot of you here, so I'll use it as an example. While when I look at this album, I think of wispy teen stashes and being slammed into a locker, when I listen to it, I'm helplessly enjoying it. Which is crazy because people hate this album. Look at that! And look at that, dude. That's not good. Yeah, it's not the worst. There's plenty of albums rated lower, but you got to think about how much I love this album and those albums. As I've learned more and more about more and more music, it continues to surprise me that I still enjoy this album. I can only hope that someone out there relates with me. I can't be the only one who's helplessly enjoying a shitty album. So shit, man. It turns out I'm a fake music fan. I am helplessly nostalgic for Imagine Dragons and Coldplay. And not just nostalgic, I full-blown enjoy some of their albums. But hear me out for a second. If everyone's got childhood albums that they like more than they would otherwise because of nostalgia, should I really blame myself for liking something that I decided I liked as an actual child? In all honesty, it's kind of hard to, since after a certain point, nostalgia just kind of took over. It's hard to unlike these albums. Because when I hear Nervous by X Ambassadors, I don't think 1.59 on Rate Your Music. No, I think rocking the fuck out in my bedroom at age nine. And so I think the world would be a slightly better place if we could just all accept that someone's got an album they're not allowed to like in their favorites list. Here, you know what? I'll say it so that all of you out there don't have to. Night Visions by Imagine Dragons is one of my favorite albums of all time. Fuck. Let's go. Huh?